was, was a big problem. And so what the Ministry of uh, uh, the, the Science and Technology said, okay, if this document is not good, that's okay. We are going to put like this document in public consultation and you have like three months to make all the recommendations how we can improve like this project, like, like this, uh, this, uh, this, this product. And so what happened? There was no advice on how to change. And so this became like the official document uh, of the Ministry of Science and Technology, but uh, was really difficult because all the, the, the proposals uh, like to be implemented, they could never be implemented, except like, uh, like for some of areas like the, the Botanical Society that had like a good participation in the development of this document, they adopt uh, you know the document even without like the funding programs that never came out because of like this uh, this this uh, this uh, this effort of like the big collections to, to to block the program and then following up like in 2006 we had like the launch of the the Florida Brasiliensis online at uh, the Curitiba conference of the parties and also like the, the, the launch of uh, the, the, the book, the, the book of strategy for bio, biological collections. And then this was followed up like the open model project also funded by FAPESP, high level funding. And uh, then uh, uh, one thing that happened uh, in 2008 was the launch of a big program, a big Brazilian program of building the national institutes. The concept of this program is like how to integrate like institutions all over Brazil in topical areas. So this was a big program, it was about uh, 800 million reais, is about 400 million US dollars to fund like five-year projects. And uh, there were selected 126 institutes. And uh, one month ago, we have like uh, the final review of the results of uh, those institutes. And uh, it was interesting to see that uh, some of, some of the, 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 the institutes had like those major institutions uh, doing high level work and, uh, you know, like publishing nature and science but like they continued, continued to do more of the same. But uh, there was one institute that really worked as an a, a institute uh, uh, without walls. That's the, 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 the Brazilian Virtual Barbarian Project that I will be showing uh, some slides today. How you can build like a, an institution without walls integrated by a biodiversity information system. Uh, so I think this, this, this is a very important program for Brazil because it will have like continuity, like now bef before the end of this year they will make another call to continue the funding of uh, selecting institutes and uh, also give opportunity to other institutes like an uh, institution on, on the Brazilian initiative of pollinators and things like that. Um, and another uh, important effort of, of CRIA was to work with uh, the Rio de Janeiro Botanical Garden, that's a major, a big institution in Brazil, to, uh, to, to develop, and we developed the system to update the Brazilian list of plants that was distributed in Nagoya. Uh, in the Conference of the Parties in Nagoya. And uh, this was a major effort to do the update of list of plants of Brazil. And so the whole system was developed and uh, the baseline was uh, the combination of uh, 40 databases in different formats, like, uh, like uh, local level species databases, regional level species databases, like the, the international databases, uh, combining in a structured databases 
and uh, this database was open uh, like uh, for uh, for updating but like we had like the whole system uh, having like the editors by taxa and the contributors and uh, the system the way it was developed allow, allowed traceability on who was doing who was proposing the changes who was accepting the changes and when this was done and how and uh, then you know like with all this effort like to update like the list of plants involving uh, nearly uh, 500 experts not only brazilian experts but international experts we ended up like with uh, with uh, the updated database that was the basis uh, to to print out like the the list of uh, the list of plants of brazil and so i think like uh, the way the system was developed uh, now it it allows like continuous updating so every year we have like uh, every uh, thir third first of december we have like the list of plants of brazil for that year and so i think this was a major effort uh, that uh, is opening new uh, avenues for new adventures like now i think we are thinking on how we can have uh, the 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 catalog of plants of brazil by by 2020 but like the live catalog of plants um, so this list of plants was delivered like was one of the products of uh, brazil uh, for the cbd at nagoya and uh, it's interesting to say that uh, by the time like because we have like the targets like for for the cbd meetings uh, uh, by the time uh, Brazil, uh, did, I think, like, and the targets were, were established, like, in 2002. And uh, then uh, for the Nagoya meeting of 2010, this was the International Year of Biodiversity. And uh, the Brazilian government, the Ministry of Environment, established, like, 52 targets. And out of those 52 targets, only two were achieved. <laughs> only two, two, okay. two. But see, I, I think like you know, like it's not only the problem of CBD; it's the problem of the countries. Yeah. Only two targets. Indeed, only one and a half target, because one of the target, one of the targets of Brazil is to have like the the revi revised list of plants and animals, and we achieved only the list of plants because it's not possible to talk with the. Uh, the zoological society in Brazil is really difficult. And so, uh, so half target uh, related to, to the list of species, and uh, the other target was to decrease uh, the, 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 the loss of forests in Brazil. So this was achieved uh, by 2010, but now is increasing again. Uh, anyhow. Uh, now, but like uh, like the the the, the targets like uh, for the year 2000 and for 2010 was a failure. Not only like for Brazil, but like uh, all over. Like uh, many countries did not achieve the, like the tar the established targets. And now we, that we are like in the decade of biodiversity, and now we have like to think that that like for the targets targets established by the 2020 which ones are we going to achieve i think that's a challenge that we have like to to really look uh, carefully right now um, another thing like uh, in 2010 uh, uh, Brazil uh, had like a, a, a project approved at, at GF, the Global Environment Facility, uh, a project of uh, 28 uh, million US dollars to, to consolidate the, the biodiversity information, uh, the Brazilian Biodiversity Information Network to support informed decision making. And uh, the project uh, is approved uh, uh, since uh, April 2010 and did not start the yacht. 
So, yeah, because you know, 8 million US dollars is from GF and 20 million from the Brazilian government as co-funding. And so Brazil has been spending a lot of money, like in you know, biodiversity, uh, biological collections, and information systems. But you know, politically, it's very difficult like, to, to have like, consensus on which are the institutions that will be involved. And, uh, but like, basically, in this project proposal to GF, the Species Link Network is the baseline network. So the idea would be like to consolidate the species link network. And now I think now we should start like to work on the next phase. How out this uh, baseline uh, information network? How we can support po uh, policy making? And so that's what we are going to be doing in the next two years. So now we have like. Uh, uh, cooperation agreement with uh, the Minister of Science and Technology to integrate uh, the, the, the species link network in the CBR, that's uh, the Brazilian information system, and uh, how we can give support not only to integrate like uh, what we have done so far in this, uh, this Brazilian network, but how we can build uh, uh, interoperability with other pieces of data like observation data and uh, you know like all all the issue you know modeling analysis biodiversity analysis and so would be wonderful to, to, to have started that in 2010 because I think we would be doing a work that would be like uh, would have like a very important impact on an international basis. But now I think we still have like two years to, to do the work and I think we are going to achieve many things. And now uh, uh, another uh, rec recent uh, effort is uh, like the cooperation between uh, the European Union and Brazil in uh, working on mechanisms to have uh, co-funded projects. So we have like a, a call for, uh, for proposal in 2010, like for co-funded projects in ICT, and one of the pro one of the ICT projects, the focus was on uh, on integration, uh, on the scoping, an integration of uh, biodiversity data tools and uh, services to support uh, uh, biodiversity analysis. And so we have like one project that's coordinated by CRIA. Uh, I w I'm going to talk a li little bit more this afternoon. That's the EU Brazil Open Bio that's finishing this, uh, this September, but we are starting another one that's the, the EU Brazil Cloud Connect that's, you know, like uh, doing all this analysis, deploying cloud computing. That's going to be starting in uh, October. Uh, so. Uh, some considerations on, you know, which are the lessons learned, like in those more than uh, 20 years uh, of uh, work uh, dealing with, uh, with uh, biodiversity data integration and uh, dissemination and working together with all types of institutions. And my feeling is that we need, we need all types of organizations. We need, uh, we need uh, the CBD, we need uh, GBIF, uh, we need, uh, we need uh, you know, like uh, all the institutions, like uh, the big biological collections, and we need also to involve the small biological collections. Uh, and uh, the thing is, uh, uh, Chris comments on, you know, like uh, on the not uh, good enough projects of uh, and outcomes of the CBD. My worry is, I think uh, we, even we, with all the problems of UN, we need UN. We need UN. See, now today, okay, we, we could not, uh, you know, have like this all international integration under the U.S. rule, 
and in the future under the China rule I think is going to be even worse. So we need nations getting together and agreeing, you know, like on conventions. And so I think, uh, I think it's, it's a pity that the uh, U.S. did not join the CBD convention, did not join the, 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 the climate convention, did uh, uh, not join the, land, the landmines convention. I think we need conventions and we need rules and we need international rules that are defined with the participation of the small and rich countries, the, the rich countries, but also like the very small countries. And so we need, but we need to improve those mechanisms. We need to improve CBD, we need to improve GBIF, and uh, it's up to us. And uh, the problem is that our countries not always do the things they should do. And so I think, but I think uh, it's, it's worse not to have like those organizations. Uh, and also, I think uh, the importance of these small organizations, like CRIA is, uh, is a very small organization and uh, very small funding, like let's say like uh, half million US dollars to one million US dollars a year. And when you look at uh, the impact of uh, the products of CRIA, like uh, it's much more than you know, like of the big organizations that have big funding. And so I think I think like we sh like uh, we should think like in a, you know in a network of uh, of institutions giving some opportunity for the survival of uh, the small institutions and uh, securing funds like for the work to be done with a with a with a good analysis and so we need we need like a networks of institutions without walls. And so that's what we are trying to focus CRIA's activity now, like on, you know, this uh, Brazilian uh, virtual herbarium. And uh, I think the next uh, institute will be like the Institute of Pollinators. And so I think like we, we have like to work on this concept of, uh, of institutions of the 21st century. But also, I think we, need, we have like to work on this issue of a legal framework. I think like Tanya made a very important comment, but what's, what's the legal background from the work such that you can take this, you can put like this in, in, the, in, the, in the government budget. So this is what we're struggling now like at CRIA like uh, how can we be part of like a gov governmental organization but keeping you know like all the flexibility that we have see the thing is in brazil like uh, like the big uh, institutions are so bureaucratic that even if they have the money they do not have like a proper management to do the things that need to to be done and so it's lots of bureaucracy. And so I can understand like the difficulties of the big museums because they do not have like flexibility to hire curators, you know, like to, 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 to process like the routine work. And also another problem, we are, we are dealing with, uh, with uh, in an area, we, we have like frontier developments all the time like informatics and so we need the uh, so you do not need like a staff member you do not need a, a staff uh, member like for the lifetime you do not need to hire a person like to work at the institution for 30 years but you need to hire like a person to work in that institution to solve the problem like so maybe some short-term contracts and in Brazil this is almost impossible that's why the big institutions cannot set up like their IT teams. And so you have like this revolution, like equipment down, going down, and the institutions, even the rich institutions, they cannot hire like staff to do the things that need to be done. And we have like to understand that, and then we have like to work on you know, flexibility of this legal framework, not only for big institutions, but also for small institutions. Uh, I think one of our friends here like, uh, make a, made a question, how you can build an institution out of a project? I don't know, I don't see this as a right approach. I think it's better to, 
to continue to do this work, I think was our colleague from Madagascar. Madagascar. I think you, you, you better continue to do this work as a project and uh, to build a partnership to ensure that all the work that's being developed will not be lost in the future. Because that's another big problem. You know, like we are getting like, uh, we are turning lots of funds into nothing because we do not have like uh, mechanisms to ensure like the permanence of the products of the data, tools and services. Think about like the, the global environmental facility, how many million US dollars they have been spending supporting biodiversity programs. And then if you ask to, to GF, where is the data out of the pro projects?